Hi everyone, this is a Sunray Thin Client, a tiny computing device which requires a server such as this B440 to run and do anything useful. Sun Microsystems produced variants of these between 1999 and 2014, nominally to run Unix like you're seeing here. But Unix wasn't exactly the enterprise workstation du jour in the early 2000s, uh, nor is it now. So out of the box, these things could support connecting to Windows machines, like this. I'm gonna to try to muster up as many Windows OS installs as I can, VMs or otherwise down here in the lab. <laughs> We're obviously starting with a Windows XP VM running in my Proxmox instance. We'll move on from there and get these connected up to an actual physical, somewhat era appropriate Windows server from 2000. It's running Windows 2000. And of course, if we get that far, there's nothing left to do but to install the Westwood Studios 1999 classic Command and Cocker Tiberian Sun on this bad boy. See how the sun rays like that. And then we will be taking it one step further with this. This is a Sun PCI 3. This is an entire x86 computer on a PCI card that you put inside your Sunfire servers. This thing is interesting because you can't actually just install Windows on those Sunfire servers. They have totally different incompatible architectures. But obviously there was enough demand for Windows applications to be running in enterprises that had Sun machines that Sun developed things like this. This is what myself and some folks in the biz might refer to as cursed computing. Cursed computing is when you have something so confunding, obtuse, probably hard to configure, and at the same time a technological marvel that you wonder, should this even exist at all? For example, imagine you're on your Windows 10 machine, you fire up a Windows ME VM, you use an ancient version of Ultra VNC, to VNC into a Windows XP VM running on a totally different machine just so you can play Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. Is it possible? Yes. Is it cursed? Also yes. I think this is going to be really fun to set up. <laughs> we'll be getting Windows installed on physical hardware inside the Sunfires and then we'll connect to them with the Sunrays which are running on the same server. So. Let's get into it. Sun and their Sunrays weren't the only thin client in town back then. There were many big competitors, and most of them were leveraging Windows. Microsoft released Windows NT Terminal Server Edition back in 1998 to compete in the thin client space, which included terminal server software to allow remote thin client connections. This was in fact licensed from Citrix, who had developed the terminal server software in previous versions of NT under the name of WinFrame. This all became what we now know today as Remote Desktop Connection or Microsoft Remote Desktop. So here I am here in 2023 on a Windows 11 machine. It just came with Remote Desktop. You don't have to have any sort of NT, special NT server version anymore with the terminal services uh, that we will get into that with Windows 2000. So I'm gonna connect to a Windows XP VM that has been configured to accept remote connections. And you can see we can remote right in and use the thing. On a modern computer, <laughs> it's pretty clunky. So like, I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but it's really hard to get it nice looking. It might look better on the recording. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty miserable experience. And as we'll see, when you're using sort of the era appropriate sun rays, it's pretty ergonomic, which kind of has me thinking. So of course, to stay competitive, Sun supported Windows connections out of the box with these Sunrays. So I was going to go over showing you the Sunray connector for Windows. That's how the Sunrays are able to actually connect to a Windows machine, uh, but it was already installed. So in a previous video, we got the, the Sunray server software set up. I'll link to that in the description, and it must have already come with the commands we need. So the one we're gonna need is this UTTSC, and you can see even in this documentation, it refers to it as the Windows Terminal Server. <laughs> so yeah, let's hop over to a Sunray and see what it's like to use this thing. All right, I lied. We're going on a really quick side quest. Would it even be a Sunray video if I wasn't trying and failing to upgrade this Sunfire V240? <laughs> so this Sunfire is the server that's actually hosting the Sunray software that these thin clients connect up to and use and a very interesting package showed up today. So the story with this thing is that when I got it, one of the CPUs was missing a heatsink. So I bought a heatsink, 
put said CPU on there, but it had been fried and <laughs> cost me no end of grief. So basically this thing's been running with one CPU, one bank of RAM, and a viewer named Rick reached out to donate two UltraSpark 3Is that are compatible with this thing. He said he wasn't sure of their condition, but last he knew they were working, so that's fine. We've got two to try at least. And then a bunch of sticks of two gig DDR1 RAM. I don't even know if this thing can use two gig sticks, but, but we're gonna try it out. So let's get these open and see how they're looking. Well, that's a good sign. They're in little plastic holders. Yeah, I don't know how well that comes out on camera, but that one for sure looks plenty straight to me. And this one does as well. Maybe one little bent pin, that's no big deal. We'll, we'll start with the other one. All right, first gotta get this guy off. This is the bad one. Uh, I'll clean him up. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Christmas ornament. All right, good enough. I am very, very excited about this. I have really grown to like this machine. <laughs> I've been using it a lot for the Sunray stuff. It's the only thing I have that has the full Sunray server software on there. Oh, we might have a bent pin. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, it's just being stubborn. I mean, I literally didn't even Google it. This came maxed out with one gig sticks. Uh, you know, let's just see if it can take two gig sticks. I don't even know if these work. <laughs> let's go for broke, max it out with two gig sticks. All right, got her hooked up on the bench for a quick test. Power that on in a second. This is actually great news because I had already bought another UltraSpark 3i on eBay with the intention of replacing that one that had fried. So now we've got two, hopefully they're both good. Both pulled from, you know, good locations. I had stolen the four gigs of RAM that was in there from this V440 parts rig, which is missing all four CPUs. So now we have full RAM back in that guy and two CPUs to throw it in there. So we will be reviving that in a future video. Okay, moment of truth. I have committed the cardinal sin and replaced like a bunch of things at once. So if one of the new pieces is broken, I won't know. And it's going to take me forever to figure it out. And I didn't even clean any of the edge connectors on the RAM. <laughs> so, the machine is sitting over there. You just saw it. I'm going to give it power. This is the serial console. There's the LOM starting up. We'll wait for this to do its thing. It doesn't tell you much because it doesn't really talk to the CPUs or the RAM, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, LOM is happy. That's sort of the first set of firmware that kicks in when you plug these things in. It's not, it has power. It's plugged into the wall, but it's not turned on. So now we're going to turn it on with the power on command, and it will be a little louder in here now. Let's hop over. That is a good sign. So now we are entering the open boot PROM. The fact that we made it here means probably nothing is entirely dead. So I'll be back when this starts up. That memory is good. 16 gigs in this V240. I never thought I would see the day. And it's not complaining about the processors. I think this one is indicating that we're on one of the processors. Might have to look into that later. Yeah, I think everything is working great. Rick, if you're watching, thank you. This thing is absolutely blown out now. This is super exciting. I wonder if we'll see any difference when we're messing around with these sun rays. So I'm going to power this down, get it in the other room because it's pretty loud, and we'll continue. All right. Home on top of the rack again for noise reasons, but we'll be back on the bench when we introduce our new friend a little later on. <laughs> uh, not so fast. I forgot that I had a low diagnostic setting on. 
and it's failing memory tests all over the place. So it's trying to tell us bank one in processor zero, bank zero, dim zero. That is the first memory stick of the original CPU that's in there. So it's either not compatible with two gig sticks, or maybe I just need to reseed them. So I'll, I'll let you know what I find out. We're so back and we had a bad stick of two gig RAM. <laughs> so I love playing with this old enterprise stuff. It tells you exactly which dim slot to go to. I think it was complaining about the exact pin it didn't like. <laughs> anyway, reseeded them, cleaned them, nothing. So pulled the matching pair out. So we pulled four out, put two of the one gig sticks back in. So we've got 14 gigs of RAM. It's way better than the four I had in there before. I don't think you're supposed to mismatch the amount of RAM between the two CPUs, but I mean, we're just messing around down here <laughs> and, I, and I think it's working fine. It's booted, so onward. All right, it is finally time to get Windows running on these things. So let's talk about the Sunray connector. It gives us a command called the UTTSC command. Let's break that down a little bit. So all of the Sun software packages on Solaris start with Sun W, that was Sun's stock ticker back in the day, and then the name of the command. So in our case, we have Sun W, U-T-T-S-C. All of the Sunray stuff starts with U-T. I don't really know what it means. It Maybe it stands for Unix terminal or something? I'm not sure. And so in this case, we have a U-T-T-S-C. T-S-C probably stands for terminal services connector, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> But this is the command that the Sunray server comes with that lets us actually connect in via Windows Remote Desktop to Windows machines. So right off the bat, let's give a Windows XP machine a shot. As you might expect, a little window comes up. <laughs> that speaker is actually built into the Sunray that you're looking at, which <laughs> I always love. So yeah, uh, not too inspiring yet. One thing of note is that if we log off, it does actually close the window. So the Sunray connector isn't just a, you know, trivial implementation here. There's something, some smarts going on. And then a much better experience is with the dash M command. So that'll get you into full screen. And I have to say, this feels like you're using the actual Windows XP machine. It's like really enjoyable. <laughs> Let's fire up Internet Explorer. Let's try to connect to something that I have in my home lab that's actually old enough. This is an ancient iDRAC, the remote administration service running on one of my servers in the rack. This is actually why I keep these Windows XP machines around. Fun fact, if you buy one of these old Dell machines and the iDRAC has been reset, the username is root and the password is Calvin. I do not know why. So yeah, we're in. This is the remote management for the, the Dell R510. And of course, to log into the virtual console, you need to use Java. All this remote administration is actually one of the reasons I got into this enterprise stuff. This just always fascinated me. So yeah, here's the, <laughs> yeah, so here's the terminal window for my TrueNAS instance running on a Dell R510 on a Sunray Thin client remoted into my Windows XP VM. Another interesting thing else you'll notice earlier when we were on this VM, it was using the Windows XP, you know, classic theme. And here, when I remote in, we've only got access to these Windows standard and, and classic styles, these older ones. And so I actually saved off that theme and we can browse for it here and see what happens when we try to load it up. And it complains, it says the theme could not be loaded because the theme service is not running. And then, yeah, if we go investigate, I'm no Windows administrator, uh, especially with the services and all that crap that it does. But we have a service named Themes and it has been started. So we're definitely starting in some sort of like minimal environment or something here, which is kind of interesting. Now, there's no graphical user interface for this. The recommended way is to use the TSC command. And then if you want to make things more convenient, you create launchers. So you do something like this, let's call it. Windows XP. Let's get our command in there. All right, new badge acquired. Windows XP. All right, next up, Windows 10. So I've turned on remote desktop and it's complaining about NLA, which stands for network level authentication. 
and I couldn't figure, I can't figure out a way to pass the user and password properly. Probably Windows 10 doesn't like it. And so unfortunately <laughs> you turn NLA off and of course fire this up. Log in and yeah, it just, uh, just kind of works. So can't complain about that. And of course you get a modern web browser, which is nice. Windows 10 is in. All right, Windows 11 time. And yeah, to even get this far, I had to turn off NLA again. And it, it kind of works. <laughs> we get this little accessibility settings and apparently we can restart or shut down the computer. But yeah, uh, this just eventually times out and closes the windows. So no Windows 11. I almost forgot to show. Pull your card out. Back in. So my Sunray server is being finicky and I have to type my password, but obviously our session is preserved and we're right back in Windows. Well, that was so straightforward and boring that I went to bed. It's the next day. So I wanted to kick it up a notch and take a look at this Compact ProLiant. This is a Gen 1 ProLiant. They now run under the HP ProLiant name of Enterprise Servers. It's running Windows 2000 Pro, which apparently cannot host the Windows terminal services for us to log into with these Sunrays. In my infinite wisdom, I did not install the server edition of 2000. So we were gonna have all sorts of fun. Install Tiberian Sun, absolute classic. Play that, see how it goes on these Sunrays. But we're cursed. I told you, this thing wants to be the star of the show. So <laughs> I'm not reinstalling Windows on this, at least not today. Well, let's dive right into the Sun PCI. We'll get a version of Windows on it that we can remote into. And uh, yeah, let's see how cursed this thing really is. All right, let's have a look at this thing. So this particular unit was manufactured in March of 2006, but I, the earliest reference I could find to it on the Sun website was from 2004, so I believe that's when it came out. So in the box, we've got some basic documentation with 2004 date codes, so that kind of adds up right here. Got a USB and Firewire card with this massive daughter board connection. We'll see what that's about. In here, got the software and the product notes and the binary code license. They were gearing up for Oracle acquisition already, I guess. Some sort of divider plate, probably for particular servers. And I should mention, I don't believe this has ever been used. So obviously I've been in here, you've seen the card, but I ripped all that open myself. So over here, like I was saying, I gotta cut this open. All right, and that package was a parallel and serial port. We will be using this. I've got plans for that guy. Another little special divider, probably for a particular machine. ESD wrist strap. <laughs> we, we won't be using this. And then of course, the unit itself. So this thing is an x86 machine on a PCI board. And what I mean by that is x86 is the common CPU architecture that Windows uses. And the Spark machines in Sun's Unix world were using Spark chips, not Intel or AMD x86 chips. And so you couldn't run Windows software on those machines. This was meant to bridge the gap. So this is an AMD Athlon XP 2100 plus running at 1.6 gigahertz, the CPU here, an x86 CPU. This is a 256 megabyte PC 2100 SO DIMM. Uh, I had a little panic attack when I saw that it was only 256 megabytes until I remembered that operating systems like Windows 2000 only require like 132 megabytes recommended. And I think they can run on as little as 32. So that made me feel old and young right at the same time. On here, I believe that's that daughter board connection for the USB and Firewire. We're not going to be using that. And then here and here are the parallel and serial port connectors. On the edge here, we've got an indicator light, another USB, 10, 100, one gig NIC, VGA, and some audio in outlines. This is the last iteration of these cards that Sun made. And now I couldn't find an exact price for this one, but I did find a price sheet from 2007 for a Sun PCI 2 Pro, which was two versions older than this one. And in 2007, it was still going for list price, 850 bucks, 850 US dollars. So 
These probably weren't very cheap. Here's what I'm thinking. I've been perusing the 214 page Sun PCI3 user's guide, and it looks like the software you use to actually set up the OSs on the Sun PCI, it's a GUI basically. You're not doing a lot of stuff on the command line. So we're gonna start by putting the serial and parallel port in this bottom slot. I have big plans for that later. And uh, this came, I don't know if you can tell, bent up from the factory. So that's nice, I'll fix that first. And then in the second slot, we'll put the Sun PCI itself. And in the top one, I've got this Sun XVR 600 video card. This is just in case we need to actually see video from the server itself. I think I'm gonna be able to get away with actually just using the sun rays, which is kind of cool, because <laughs> obviously I can access the server visually on them. So hopefully that'll work, but just in case, so I don't have to get in here a million times, I'll, I'll pop this in the top one. So let's get to it. All right, I think I got that connector reasonably straight. You can't actually uh, screw these in. This little latching mechanism comes around and clamps onto them when you're done. So that just has to float there while I'm putting the other two in. Star of the show. Okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to plug these in and then snake it in there somehow. All right, I can assure you that that sucked. So, video card's all that's left. These V240s are kind of clever. They've got these sliding plastic rails to adjust automatically to the size of the card you're putting in. Kind of cool. Over-engineered, but, but cool nonetheless. Okay, let's close this up and move on to the Sun PCI software install. Finished product. Kind of cool seeing this thing all maxed out. All right, the machine's back together. It's running. It's just a few feet away from me here on the other bench. I went and got a copy of the Sun PCI 321 ISO off the internet archive, so I don't have to unwrap my shrink wrapped version. I'm not usually opposed to doing that, but only if it's going to, you know, provide me <laughs> some utility or I want to see what's in the package. So in this case, we'll grab it from here. I've got the ISO sitting on my NAS, accessible on the machine. This is the V240 here. We're going to mount this in a special way as a CD-ROM, and then we'll install the software that's on it. So the first step is you use the lo-fi ADM package with dash A, you pass it the path to an ISO. It'll spit you back a device you can use to mount. You can then use the mount command. I have a folder in slash mount CD-ROM that I'm gonna put it in. Okay, let's make sure we think we have what we have, we do. And then it's as simple as using the package add dash D, the path to the software, just like that. Once you get used to the Solaris package man management stuff, it's it's kind, of, it's kind of slick. We just want the normal one, not the VNC one. All right, I'll be back. And we failed, of course. Uh, cannot open file Etsy master .any. Okay, I'll be back. All right, so I Googled the error message and one of the results was a forum post from 18 years ago with exactly what I needed to do to get around this error. Installed again and it everything was just fine. That CPU is a 2100. So it's complaining about some PCI driver it can't find, dot .2100, so that's suspicious, but onward. Uh, let's see if we can use this thing. All right, so it's all GUI-based, and my cunning plan here is to use the Sunrays to actually configure the Sun PCI. So here's the command we're supposed to run. <laughs> Look at that error message. <laughs> so it's actually September 2023, and this thing says, I can't believe it's really Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. Your system time appears to be set in the future. Ew. <laughs> okay. Uh, one second. Okay, September 20th, 2003. <laughs> Let's see what it thinks about that. Oh, now we're in the past. Okay, 2006 is fine. <laughs> We've got to use it for the first time, either create a new C driver or attach an existing one. We are going for new. Yeah, this is what I thought. A big GUI. Uh, okay, I need to go read some more documentation, and then we'll walk through this. All right, we're going for server 2003 this time. It's doing its thing. I didn't really read the documentation. I'm just going to wing it. 
Ooh. I like that. All right, the only way to get an OS on there is from CD-ROM, and uh, we have a problem. Peruse the old stockpile here. This is pretty new, and I seem to remember it not working. Are these hot swappable? Let's find out. Yeah, this one must be different. All right, not a problem though. These like, are these like latched in or something? They are. It's little things you have to depress. Let's get that out of there. From the V440, rando on my shelf. And yeah, no surprise there. Totally different connectors. I don't know what I expected. So this one has these special tabs that I think are bespoke to the V440 but definitely not okay for the V240. So I told you this thing's cursed. Okay, that was like not good. This is a perfect example of how you should not build something. It was like the sticky tape on here attached to the sticker that got all ripped up. I probably broke it in the process. Why take something standardized and make it completely not standard and hard to reverse? Like. Ridiculous. It's also occurring to me that there's probably some software cleverness I could do and just mount the ISO and make it act like a CD-ROM. That wouldn't be any fun. Uh-huh. All right, back to work. All right, just got to get our legit copy of Windows Server 2003 set up. This, this is fine. This is how the manual says to do it. All right, Solaris won't recognize this. Has power. Uh, the OS doesn't find it, but but it but it finds this. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So this is what we're gonna go with. Okay. Let's try to attach that drive we made. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It's posting mobile AMD Athlon XP. Oh man, this is incredible. <laughs> I can't believe this is working. And hopefully we'll get into the Windows Server 2003 installer. All right, it just hung there because I had created a blank drive, basically. So now that we have a working CD-ROM, we're going to go down to 2003, four gig hard drive. And what should happen is same idea. It's going to go off and create this four gig emulated hard drive and it should be able to boot and load the Windows installer this time. I'll bring you back. Bad news. Long story short, I did some more digging and Solaris 10 doesn't have the right drivers for the Sun PCI cards. <laughs> so that little step I did at the end of the install works for some people, maybe on some machines. For, I think it's actually maybe a miracle, a cursed miracle, that we even saw that post screen. I never got that to happen again. Anytime we reset the Sun PCI to attach a hard drive in the console, you can just see hardware errors. It's having trouble talking with the Sun PCI. Tried a bunch of stuff, reseeded it, moved it to a different PCI slot, thought maybe it was outputting video on the actual VGA port on the device. No luck. It's a brand new card. I'm not convinced there's actually hardware issues with the card. I think we're dealing with software issues because of the driver error messages I showed you. Okay, as I'm editing this, a couple more thoughts. It could be hardware failure. So it was working, we saw it post, and then it just stopped and didn't work after that. No changes on my part. So maybe I should have pulled the CPU off, seen what the thermal situation was. Sun likes to use thermal pads on all their gear, which in my experience hold up to the test of time, even like this thing's been on a shelf for 20 years better than thermal compound. Maybe that's a factor. On the other hand, I was seeing those same hardware errors when I restarted the machine for the first time before I ever saw it post. So could also be software. When you have this custom hardware, you definitely want your drivers correct and working or you're, you're going to have a bad time. So suffice it to say, when we dive into this thing to try to get it working again, we'll, we'll take both avenues explore the hardware route, maybe something's wrong with the CPU, as well as look at the driver situation. So this video is getting kind of long and the game plan is going to be 
pull the hard drive out of that V240, install Solaris 9 on a new hard drive, get the Sunray stuff working again, and then try the Sun PCI. The other option is I could throw the Sun PCI in, in one of these V440s I've got, but I really like the idea of the server that's hosting the thin client software having the Sun PCI inside of it and then the thin clients connecting to that. That's like way funnier. So I hate to end it like this, but I guess what I'm saying is there's gonna be more videos on this stuff coming eventually. <laughs> it's just gonna be a lot of setup work that is not worth filming. And then we'll get a Solaris 9 install going and see if we can get this thing working. But in the meantime, we did get these things connected to Windows. It works. We didn't get to play Tiberian Sun, so we're gonna have to do a video on that. But if you like this kind of content and you wanna support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon. I post behind the scenes type videos there and posts along with the occasional early access to a video. But at any rate, we're definitely gonna have more content coming on this Sun PCI. Uh, this is absolutely no closure. So <laughs> uh, it's gonna drive me nuts until I figure that out. But in the meantime, Really hope you enjoyed this video and got at least a little bit of something out of it and maybe a little excited for when we can figure out how to get that thing working in the future. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.